I really want to share a bit about citizen science, not so much as something to be done by nonprofits, but as a, an area which is growing and exploding really and may provide inspiration for, for various things. So I'm from a tech and science background, so if I misunderstand nonprofit uh, needs, just boo. Um, the main difference between citizen science campaign and other types of campaigning is just that, uh, as is implied in the term, it goes direct to just asking people to do the thing, in this case research or find data, um, whatever the action is in order to understand something, that's what's being asked of the participants, not to contribute money and then be told that they've helped the elephant or to do any kind of a secondary action. They are just as much part of the team who's conducting the work as anyone else. So the objective of the citizen science campaign is to involve people in, in equal, equally doing something. It's jargon in some senses. You find it um, a lot of overlap with crowdsourcing, citizen journalism, and other areas. But the mechanics of it, as I said, are slightly different. You've got the input of, of, a, of a participant is usually effort, and the output is information. Whereas very often, um, from what I'm understanding here, the input is information explaining why something is a problem or what we need to do about something, and the output may be funds or it may be actions which can help to get those funds or that activity. But in the context of evidence-based policy making, going straight for the information can have its advantages. One reason is asking people to do things 10, 15 years ago was considered something a bit weird. Now, as examples like Wikipedia and Mozilla show, I don't claim to understand it. It's just how it is. People will work for free. The world has changed. Ask them to do stuff. And the relevance I think it may have, or, or I hope to find out more about, is for a lot of the participants here maybe doing something of this style, in which case they are making campaigns in order to get funds to do research professionally, to then get data to present to power or, or achieve other objectives. And citizen science can provide inspiration in that you just go direct. You make campaigns that are the research. If you need research from a particular place, the mobile device is more than sufficient to um, get valid quantitative data. And what I would like to put forward is that the side effects from inviting people to actually be the researchers can be tremendous. And they can make the value of, of running such a campaign um, extreme. They include things like, in order to be empowered to do an investigation, whether it's on snails or sky trails or animals in your own backyard, has a, a, a learning function, obviously. You're really participating. You don't need to go through um, a lot of communications in order to convince people that they're really helping, because they really are. And you're getting work and data direct rather than finding out. So some examples which I think are quite inspirational, these are some of the, the most used things. Snapshot Serengeti, um, I don't know how many have used this. You, you have, uh, there are cameras set up in Serengeti National Park and you help classifying uh, animals that pass in front of it and the snaps that are taken. And uh, by the same, the same organization, Zooniverse, a million volunteers have helped in classifying uh, various pictures of uh, galaxies. Um, who here wouldn't like to have a million volunteers contributing real effort into their campaigns directly? Um, they haven't been manipulated into it, uh, guilted into it, or anything else like that. They simply, there's a, a gamified elephant, but it's kind of a geeky game of gamify sort of feel about it. They're, they're, they're feeling that they're participating in something um, on a first degree level, and they go for it. And a million volunteers translates into two days of effort every hour, and they do tremendous amount of useful work. Um, we, the, we're very focused on mobile and the company I've built, we, because mobile explodes what you can do with citizen science. Um, old school uses of citizen science were very often monitoring. We've got a campaign up there for spotting dogs. It really doesn't matter whether you're spotting dogs, human rights violations, corruption. Um, the maps you see on the left and right come from a city in Mexico with a very classic case of people monitoring city infrastructure, harassment, and things like that. 
Um, but again, the people who are, are doing this work are agents of, of the campaign um, in a very, very real sense. They are professionalized by the application they use so that the data that comes back to the, the central database is structured. And that's really a key, a key feature of citizen science, is to gather structured data. It's doing the work of science. And I think the, that need not be the objective for, for some attendees here. Um, however, the side effects, um, as I mentioned, of inviting people to be genuine participants can vastly outweigh you may find at the end of the day you don't get that exact data that you needed to present for advocacy. But we are very interested in finding from this whole citizen science world, once someone is hooked in, once you've got my mum hooked in, rather than adopting an elephant, um, growing flowers in her garden and monitoring how they're going, I think she's much more likely to, to um, uh, donate funds to a campaign anyway. There are disadvantages of, of this approach. Obviously, it's quite, sometimes quite dry, and uh, it's, up to, it's up to us, really, to make it exciting and to make people understand what they're doing. I think, given that the honk is gone, there, there are questions around you know, how, uh, how straight uh, you have to be with a citizen science audience in terms of demanding accuracy and validations. But there's ways around that on the data side, which I'll discuss with anyone who wants to make a citizen science type app. Come and speak to me. We can look at how, uh, how we could do it for you. That's it.